He went over there, he did what you asked him to do. And the people he was training and helping over there, they turned on him. They turned on him and he told me weeks ago, Dad, they're shady. I don't want to be here. Wow. Uh, disturbing news this morning for that father and the families of two other U.S. Marines gunned down by one of our Afghan so-called allies shot in the back while they worked out. The self-proclaimed jihadist who bragged about murdering these brave young men will only serve the minimum sentence, seven and a half years. Why? They charged him for as a minor. Lieutenant Colonel Alan West served over there as a contractor and in the military. He says, add this to the growing list of insults. Your reaction for the tremendous effort to charge this guy who killed our guys while they worked out in the Hellman province. Yes, this is absolutely unconscionable what happened to Lance Corporal Buckley and the two other Marines, as well as a fourth Marine who received severe wounds. What happened was this uh, Ino Dean, who was given a bone test and it proved that he was uh, somewhere between 17 and 18 years of age, uh, he should not have been tried as a, as a juvenile. As a matter of fact, the family of Lance Corporal Buckley was told that he was not going to be tried as a juvenile. But lo and behold, the trial goes about and they find out that he's only going to get seven and a half years uh, this is this is heinous and this is something that should not have happened he should have been tried as an adult and he should have gotten the death penalty for what he did in cold blood going into FOB Delhi in Helmand province and gunning down these four Marines yeah it was uh, Marine Lance Corporal Greg Buckley you saw his dad there and then you had Sergeant mm -hmm. Dickinson Corporal Richard Rivera Riviera and uh, and Sergeant uh, Cody Ro uh, Cody Rohde uh, they have lost their lives because they trusted the people that they were training in Afghanistan so in the big picture, Colonel, you talk to the people in the military every day like yourself. What does that do to morale? Well, it's very damaging because it's not just this incident, but when you think about the fact that we're handing out pink slips to our combat leaders who are still there in Afghanistan, but yet we cannot hand out pink slips to any of the uh, managers and officials that are in charge in the Veterans Administration and have the blood of our veterans on their hands. You have Lois Lerner with a six-figure taxpayer-funded pension. Where's her pink slip? And when you look at the fact that we are allowing all of these individuals to include MS-13 members to come across our border, right. but yet we cannot bring our own Marine, Sergeant Andrew Tamaresi, across that border back home. This is a powder keg that is building up uh, in the military community. And if we don't do the right thing and charging Bo Bergdahl as a deserter, which I think the administration is trying to sneak past this and uh, classify him as a POW, he gets $350,000 of taxpayer money. I think that might be the fuse. And by the way, Mullah Omar, in an address to the Taliban, said it was a spectacular victory, the exchange of five major Taliban officials for uh, Bo Bergdahl, and it's hard to disagree with that. Uh, Colonel, thanks for putting it in perspective. Have a great day. Thank you. See you, Brian. Okay, uh, final segment coming your way.